Well, I looked over there, they're definitely not any small trees. These are all huge. But uh, we can fit it in the foyer. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe the foyer. The French foyer. <laughs> oh! Hello, everyone. It's so great to see you. It's Christmas. Yes! We are out here in the woods trying to find the perfect tree to put into our living room. But guess what? Totally Christmas time. So, hey, raise your left hand if you're feeling holly jolly. Raise both hands if you're feeling merry and bright. I'm oh, Mariana, and this is Ryan. Yep. And we're so glad that you're joining us today. Man, but it's cold out here. Woohoo! Man, we love to celebrate Christmas because we get to celebrate the very best gift ever. And guess what? It's even better to celebrate when you guys are with us, <laughs> our friends at home. Hey! Christmas is all about celebrating Jesus. Jesus is the greatest gift ever. That's right. Jesus is the greatest gift of all because he came to be our savior. One of the reasons that we give gifts to each other during Christmas time is to remember what God did when he sent Jesus to be our savior. Mm -hmm. And I love wrapping presents almost as much as I love opening them. Oh man, I love getting any kind of gift. Seriously, it's awesome. Especially when you get something that you wanted so bad, right? Oh, but even better, it's really cool when you like get this gift that you didn't know that you wanted, but somebody was like, oh yeah, Ooh, I know that, that he would nice. like that. That is nice. Some people are just good gift givers. Mm -hmm. Well, now we all have a chance to put our dancing skills to good use and worship God for being the greatest gift giver ever. No way! Yes, everyone up on your feet. How am I gonna tap in this snow? <laughs> you can try. Okay. That is I feel weary, I'm not alone Cause you are with me, a new day is coming I see light, and the sun will rise And hope is alive, yeah No matter what tomorrow brings, I know that you'll 
this week, we're celebrating Christmas. Oh, and we're also doing this. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about Christmas. Which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. What do you love the most about getting ready for Christmas? Oh, everything. The lights, decorations, ooh, Christmas specials. And that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Don't forget setting up the nativity. Nativity? You know, all the figures from the Christmas story. Oh, yeah. We still put up the plastic manger scene from when I was a kid. Plus, we bake all sorts of cookies. Oh, I love Christmas cookies. Good, because we're going to do it all by building a gingerbread nativity. Oh, do we have to bake? Nope, but we do have to architect. Here we have all of our characters. We have Mary, we have Joseph, we have baby Jesus, and one, two, three wise men. What about the shepherds? The kid didn't have any shepherds. Well, I'm turning this guy into a shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> the kid also didn't have any barns or stable or shed, so we're gonna be using... Graham crackers. Yeah, I mean, this is where our architectural skills really come in. Have you ever made a gingerbread house before? Yeah, but the icing never holds right. The pieces always slide or fall down. Not today, because today we're using... Sugar glue. Mm, I'm not seeing glue. Well, that's because we have to apply super heat and so it melts like lava. Oh, that's cool. Let's, Let's make, make it. it. Remember, do not do this alone. Grab an adult to help. All right, first step. Pour the sugar into a bottom heavy saucepan. Thank you. All right, that should be enough to start. Step two, place the sugar on a burner on medium high heat. Definitely grab a grown-up for this part. Step three, swirl the sugar and stir as it starts to melt. Thank you. Oh, oh, here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have glue. It's actually caramelized. Sugar, or sucrose, is a single molecule. When heat is applied, it kicks off a series of chemical reactions. These can form up to 1,000 different compounds that make up caramel. It's so complicated, scientists aren't even sure how it works yet. Step five, keep your sugar glue warm while you build. Yay! <laughs> hmm, I think Frank Lloyd Wright will be proud. Who? Oh, the famous architect. Although, I don't think Frank Lloyd Wright worked in gingerbread and sugar glue. Hmm. Tasty, though. Do we get to decorate? Yes, right now. <laughs> and... <laughs> well, that turned out kind of... I mean, you can tell what it is, right? <laughs> Away in a manger, one cookie for a bed. All right, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to bless the whole world through the Israelites, but over and over, God's people would run to God and then pull away, just like a yo-yo. Then, foreign nations invaded and captured the Israelites. They must have wondered if God still loved them and if he had a plan for them. God spoke through prophets about the great rescuer God would send. And at last, after hundreds of years, God sent an angel to tell a girl named Mary she would have a very special baby. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. 
Hey, everybody. Hey, Brian. Okay, the stage was set. After so many long years, God's amazing rescue plan was underway. And God actually used a foreign king to help carry out that plan. The Jewish people lived under Roman rule. And the Roman leader, Caesar Augustus, needed money for his fine palaces and large army. I command a census of every single person in my entire empire. That meant that every person had to be counted and placed on a list to pay expensive taxes to Rome. And news of this census traveled all the way from Rome to the tiny town of Nazareth in Judea, on the very edge of the Roman Empire. Hear ye! Hear ye! Every person must go immediately to their own hometown to be listed. A carpenter named Joseph and the girl he was engaged to marry, named Mary, heard the decree. <sighs> I guess I'll be making a road trip to Bethlehem. I guess we'll be making a road trip to Bethlehem. Both Joseph and Mary had been born into the family line of King David, so they would have to make the week-long journey to Bethlehem, the town of David, in order to be counted. Now, this was more than a little inconvenient, as Mary was nearly ready to have a baby. A baby whose birth had been announced by an angel! You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem was uh, about 70 miles, which is just a couple hours by car, but a whole week of travel on foot or by donkey. The journey was long and dusty. Camping out on the rough ground could not have been very comfortable for Mary. At last, Mary and Joseph saw the town of Bethlehem. They must have been ready for a hot bath and a quiet place to stay after that long journey. But the little town of Bethlehem was not so still and silent. Lots of other people had come to be countered as well. They filled every inn and guest room in town. There has got to be room for us somewhere. Have we checked with all of your relatives? Even my great aunt Hulda and my third cousins twice removed. Finally, the very last home that Mary and Joseph tried had a room, sort of. They were offered a place to stay with the animals. I don't know about this. It's dry, it's warm, and this baby really, really, really needs a place to be born. So Mary and Joseph settled into their most unusual guest room, and there with the cows, and sheep, and chickens, Mary's brand new baby boy was born. It's just like the angel told you, and his name. The angel said we must call him Jesus. Mary wrapped her baby tightly in long strips of cloth to keep him warm and cozy. There was no crib or cradle, so she placed him in a manger. The king of the entire world slept peacefully in the animal's feeding trough as Mary and Joseph looked on. And outside, the nighttime sky blazed with stars. God's very own son, the best gift ever, came into the world in the most unexpected way. And the birth announcement, well, I'm just gonna save that for later. Most amazing birth story ever. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, nobody understood it then, but this tiny baby was going to grow up to teach and heal and show people what God was like. And then Jesus would choose to lay down his life and the whole world to defeat death itself. That is some Christmas gift. Not exactly something you just find on an Amazon wish list. So what's our part in the story? Well, our world gets wrapped up in hoping for so many different things, you know? We want everything from world peace down to a a shiny new skateboard, and that's great. But in the middle of it all, be sure to remember the most important gift. Right, so find a quiet moment to thank God for the gift of Jesus and ask God to help you walk with Jesus every moment of the coming year. Yeah, because knowing Jesus is an amazing gift that you can open every single day. I think you've got it. So, Merry Christmas, ho, 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 ho. See you next Merry time. Merry Christmas, bye, bye Brian. Brian. So here's the thing, Jesus is the greatest gift. I think we need some sheep at the manger. Big, fluffy ones. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.
is not. <laughs> oh, can I smear some of this in your face? No. <laughs> Why not? Oh. oh, man. Hey, guys. Wow. Just, whew. wow. I mean, this is the reason we celebrate Christmas. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the very best and most incredible gift the world has ever known. Mm. It was always God's plan to send Jesus to be our Savior. And because of Jesus, we can be forgiven for everything that we have done wrong and every wrong thing that we will ever do. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to make everything right once and for all. That's why he's the greatest gift. <laughs> That's right. Everything in God's story led up to the moment when Jesus was born. Jesus came to save the whole world. Just like our memory verse, Luke 2.11 says, Let's say it together. Ready? Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And here's the really amazing part. When we put our trust in Jesus, we have a forever relationship with God that nothing and no one can ever take away. I mean, just think about what it was like to for God's people when Jesus was born. God had promised them a Savior and they waited and they waited and they kept on waiting and they waited even more, and they waited and waited and waited for it to happen. But then the time was right. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and he was and still is to this day the Savior God promised. And as we celebrate Christmas, I hope we all get to hear lots of great music, see twinkly lights, and eat some delicious treats. But Let's also take time to thank God for sending Jesus. Yes, and let's remember what Christmas is really about. The best and most important gift that we could ever get, which is to know Jesus and to trust in him. Mm -hmm. Let's pray and thank God for the greatest gift ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us Jesus, the greatest gift ever. Thank you for sending Jesus to rescue us and to be our savior. Thank you for loving us so much and for showing us that we can trust you no matter what. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know why we walked out there. <laughs> what if we actually did a find a tree? I know. Then we'd have to haul Drag it back. Drag it back. Um, All right. Well, let's jump in there. I was going to look go that way. When I wake up, when I wake up, I know that you are with me every step of the way. You're strong enough, you're strong enough to handle any fear that I face. Even things that scare me, cause they seem to be. 